Welcome back to the Ethereum Adventure. Now, this is the third tutorial in the series of Ethereum Adventure tutorials. If you're looking for a easier way to get to grips with Solidity, I do advise checking out my other playlist, which is on my YouTube channel, um, which will basically take you through the basics of Solidity as, um, as a whole. But this is primarily down to games design um, using the Ethereum network. Now, in our past couple of tutorials, we've just covered the basic concept of the game, the character, and the classes. And we've done so in a way that we've only implemented the name. Now, in today's tutorial, we're going to complete as much as we can with the character and the class, without the need to obviously implement a token or finish developing the spells. So, from our previous tutorial, you might remember this, um, this sort of little graph. Um, I'll just hide my head for a moment. I say graph, uh, this, uh, this diagram. And basically, we were looking at last time, making changes to the game, the character, the classes. We, we still haven't done too much with the skill. And I'm going to not do anything with that in today either. Today is just purely going to be around character and class. So to make this a little bit easier, let's just clean up the other two columns so we only have our, our key area of focus. So currently we actually have the name and the class completed as part of the character and the name completed as part of the class. In today's tutorial, I plan to tackle almost all the rest apart from like I stated previously, the coins which would require a token implement token implementation and skills which would re require us to complete the skills so with that being said let's jump back into the code and I'll return my uh, big head back to the screen so I've already got ganache running and we have our code which has basically been taken from our last um, our last position and now I was doing some thinking on how to sort of work with the classes and and sort of how to set things up a little bit better now like i said i have done a little bit of playing around with this and i do have uh, basically the tutorial to my left is or oh, sorry the code base to my left is what i perceived that we should have set up for this tutorial and the first thing we're going to tackle is essentially the construction of the classes. Now, I'm not a big fan of the fact that the way I've done this is I have a function that returns just a static string. That just seems a little bit overkill. And if I make a change that I've got updated in three places. So to begin with that, we're gonna look at having a constructor for the class. And also as part of this, we're gonna have all the basic attributes assigned as part of the class as well. So if I take this for as example, um, the class has a name, skills, which we're gonna ignore, strength, intelligent, agility, health, and mana. Okay, so let's go back and let's set up those basic, um, those basic variables, all those basic attributes. So as per before, we're still gonna require a name. So we're gonna need a string, make it private, and we're just gonna call it name. Then we're gonna have a hit points. So again, so sort of similar thing, except this is gonna be a unit. Make it private and call it hit points. And then the same thing for mana points. Unit private mana points. Then we have the three attributes of agility, intelligence, and strength. So let's just chuck those in as well. Unit private um, agility, spot right, unit private intelligence, and unit private uh, strength. Okay, so we have all of our attributes again, like I said, minus skills uh, set up. Now the first thing I want to do is get rid of this horrible get name. And in fact, no, I don't. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have it return the name. So you don't need this function in any of the other classes. But we still need a way to create a distinct, um, a, a sort of distinct definition between each, or distinct um, difference between each of the three types of classes. So we're going to have to basically. Um, assign our attributes to these classes as well when we actually 
in, well, we're basically constructing them. So with the rogue, the warrior, and the wizard, they're all going to need to essentially call the constructor of class. So that's essentially what we're going to need to set up now. We're going to need to set up a constructor. And it's going to basically just take all the parameters that are getting passed in as part of the um, attributes. So we're going to have a string, memory, name. We're going to have a uint. Um, no need for memory. Hit points. And uint. Mana points. Uh, agility. Uint. Uint. Uh, in Unit strength. Okay, so those are all the parameters that we need to pass in as part of the constructor. And let's just simply assign them to the corresponding attributes of the contract. So name is equal to name, hit points is equal to hit points. Uh, mana points is equal to mana points. Uh, agility is equal to agility. Intelligence is equal to intelligence. And finally, strength is going to be equal to strength. So our classes now have a basic um, fundamental set of um, attributes. So to assign these when we're actually creating each of the classes, what we can do is when we actually state in, for instance, this case, rogue is class, we can actually pass our parameters as part of this um, instantiation as well. So the first thing was the name. So essentially we can take rogue, put it as the name. Let's get rid of the function called get name. Now the second parameter was the hit points. Now the rogue is going to be a balanced class. I'm going to use the basis of about 30 points for mana and hit. So we're going to have 15 mana and 15, uh, sorry, 15 hit and 15 mana. Then it's a balanced class. I'm going to give it 20 points of agility, strength and intelligence to use. And then we're going to basically have 10 in agility, 5 in intelligence, 5 in strength. And what is this unhappy about? Wrong argument count for constructor. Call six arguments given but expected zero. Why is, oh, I didn't save it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And our constructor one, two, three, four, five, six. Why is that unhappy? Ah, because I didn't make it public. It's still not happy. Uh, what am I missing? What am I missing indeed? I mean, to me, that actually... Oh, it is fine. I don't know why I was complaining. Okay, so we've set that up before the rogue. Now, I'm going to copy that and do the same thing for the warrior. Let's replace some names. Now, there's going to be some differences. The warrior is going to have... 20 health, 20 hit points, 10 mana, po um, mana points. It's going to have, this is agility. So it's going to have a mediocre amount of agility. Let's just call it for safety's sake. Two, intelligence of also two, but we're going to have a strength of 16 because he's a warrior. In fact, warrior I feel like should be balanced a little bit better, actually, no, I think two is just fine. So let's go and do the same sort of thing for the wizard. And simply state that in this case, he's going to have 10 hit points, 20 mana points. Um, agility can still be two. Intelligence is times 16 and strength can be two. So now we have our definitions of each of the classes and they're actually a lot more simplified than what they used to be. Okay, so let's just close those. And we need a way to be able to get all of these attributes as well. Now, because they're actually part of the class definition, they're going to be base stats. So 
I'm actually just going to call, oh no, to be honest, I'm going to keep these as a standard name. So, uh, function get hit points. Make it public, it's a view, and it's returning a uint. So, this is just going to return hit points. Now, I'm going to do a bit of copy and pasting. So, get mana points. Time mana points get agility underscore agility get intelligence. Is that intelligent right? I think so. Intelligence and finally get strength. So, strength. Okay, okay. So, we have all the basic definitions of our class set up. Now, as a key thing to actually run, uh, to do now is simply see if it still works. So, if we run truffle um, test, hopefully this should still pass. Because fundamentally, we've not changed anything that we currently did in um, the test. It should still have the concept of a name. It should still be able to get everything it needs to be, such as the character's name and the uh, uh, character's class. And as you can see in this case, it has and it's worked absolutely fine. Let's also just test this, see if we can shuffle migrate network ganache. And let's reset everything that we've currently done. So hopefully that should actually publish absolutely fine. Let's just see if we are. Yes, it is. So we had a successful test and a successful deployment. So things are starting to look good. Okay, now we've dealt with the class. I feel like we can leave that for now. And let's kind of move on to the changes to the character. Now, I would want to put some tests around this, but before we start doing any testing around it, we're going to need to make some changes, like I said, to the character. Now, a character itself is also going to have the same attributes as the class. And what I mean by that, it's going to have the hit points, it's going to have the mana points, agility, intelligence, and strength. Because you're going to be able to build on these, these key uh, attributes as you progress and levels and experience and so forth. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy all these and throw them over to class. Now, obviously, with the class the character as well so i should have said oh, copy them over to character and um, we also have um, experience and level so we also need to deal with that so let's put in two more uints uint private experience and uint private level Okay, so now we've got all these, uh, you've probably guessed it again, we need ourselves a selection of getters. So let's grab all of these, uh, excluding get name actually, we've already got that one. The only difference here is that we actually have another class that contains a certain, that basically contains a base amount of points. So. What we're going to do is we're going to return not just the hit points, for instance, but we're also going to return the so plus the class dot get hit points. Now, there's a problem here that that technically, if we're not careful, we could create an overflow where oh, I say an overflow where the class hits a certain point and resets. So what we need to do is implement safe um, safe math. Now there is a library for this, but I've been playing around and in introducing the library was a little slow. So what I'm going to do is the old fashioned way of doing this. So let's just take a copy of safe math that I used, copy and paste. Now this is available on the GitHub um, repository so it's github.com forward slash open zeppelin forward slash open open zeppelin dash solidity now 
if you want to know a little bit more about this open zeppelin uh, i'll leave in the description i'll leave a link in the description box down below check them out but i'm going to use their safe math functions which is why just to stop things from um, being being things that they shouldn't be essentially okay so instead of using the plus here we're simply just going to ah one thing we need to do is we need to import safe math first so import uh, libraries safe math dot sol and then we need to state that we're going to be using safe math for uint if i've got the syntax of that correct i think i haven't da, 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 da. i should have said using safe math for uint now that's the correct syntax so now I've got that, instead of just using this uh, plus operator, I can then do add and then pass it in as a secondary parameter. Now I can do the same thing for all these. So mana points add class dot get mana points. And I'm going to need to do this essentially for all of them. Get agility. And then finally, uh, we need to do this for strength as well. Okay, so we've got all those basic um, getters. But we need to make a few modifications to this as well. So the first thing that we need to do is also introduce the experience and level. So I'll throw these in, get experience, which is actually only going to need to return experience. And then finally get level, which is going to work in the same way. So you don't need to add anything to this level. Okay, so that's good. We've got all those. Now, one thing that crossed my mind when doing this is that somehow we also need the ability to increment or change things such as the level, the experience, the strength, the intelligence, the mana points, hit points, and so forth, because these are going to be constantly changing values, especially when it comes to mana and hit. Um, so we need to create some limitations on what can change these because you don't want the outside world changing the hit points and the mana points and the agility and so forth um, is sort of a free reign. So we're going to need something to manage this and in this case if you look back at our um, slide it was the game. The game manages the character. So to do that this class is all or this contract is also going to be constructed by the game. So we can simply set up first an address, make it private and call it the game. So when the class is constructed, uh, we can simply state that the game is going to equal sender dot message. Or if I get this actually right, message dot sender makes more sense. And we're also going to need a modifier as well. It's simply going to be is game. Um, requires message dot sender to equal underscore game. Otherwise, uh, request did not come from the game. Okay, and that should be require not requires. So now we can do some setters because we also now have a modifier that can that can prohibit people from actually changing certain values of your character. So we can do a function um, set or yeah, let's call it set level or add level. Uh, set or add, set or add, set or add. Let's keep it simple. Set level, and we're going to pass a uint, and we're simply just going to state level, and then public 
it's not view because it's um, interacting with an attribute of the contract. It does need to be is game, it doesn't need to return anything, so it's simply that. And then we can state level is equal to level. Now, thinking this through, some of these aren't going to decrement. Actually, some are mana and agility, uh, mana and hit points are going to decrement. So I'll just con I'll be consistent. Use says. So we set the level. We just need to set the experience. And then we need to do it for the other three, uh, five classes, uh, five attributes as well. So we got set hit points, set mana points, set agility, set intelligence, set strength. So for all these, start with strength. Uh, we also need to set the intelligence. Uh, agility. Mana points. Finally, hit points. Okay, now we've created this uh, this level of control. We can, for instance, increment or change the current level of a character, but only the game can do that. As in the the game. Uh, what was that? Uh, the game contract. So we're now at the point where we've modified all of our classes and our character to include all the new um, all the new attributes. So we pretty much ticked off everything that we had here. So we've done the experience, level, strength, intelligence, agility, health, mana. Same for the class, we've done strength, intelligence, agility, health, and mana. We've also cleaned up the classes as well. So let's see if we can make a few more alterations to this to improve it at all. Um, so we're setting that there. We have set all those appropriately. Now, there was something else that I wanted to add to the character as well. And that was just gonna simply state, uint eight private, and then underscore exists. What exist? By default, it should set to zero when the character is created. You can simply state it's one. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because in the game, I want to check to see if someone has actually created a character. So I'm going to have to create a modifier um, called has character. Go back to the game a second, and I need to a getter. So let's put it between these. Function is exist. I know it doesn't. I, I know it doesn't read very well, but that's usually the correct terminology. If it's a boolean value of one or zero, it should be an is not get, because it's just basically affirming something. Is is created no it doesn't really work is exist doesn't really sound great either is exists nope does not sound good i actually i'm just going to say is set because that's the best way that i can feel the best way that uh, we can describe it so it's public uh, returns a actually it's a view and it returns a uint8. Basically, I'm just doing a uint8 because we don't need to return a full uint for it. 
And now over in the game, what I can do is simply just state require the characters message dot sender dot is set to equal one and then simply can say character does not exist for address so any any sort of sequential actions that you want to do against the game you must require a character for so we've got the simple is set let's just make sure that everything's saved and up to date let's just run a test as well just to see i haven't broken anything i probably have because that's just what i do oh did not mean to do that terminal new terminal just meant to clear it So if I just run uh, truffle test, hopefully we're still passing. I do want to expand on the tests a little bit more. So we can now test our modifier works. I kind of don't want to chain anything more to this. I want to move this, the game, Upper directory. So that's the creator account. We also want to do a let um, let's call it character accounts and let's say accounts one. Now I'm basically just going to copy and paste all of this and just simply say it should not allow me to set a tribute of a character. So the first pass, we create the game create the character now the reason I'm just copying and pasting this and not just reusing this I want the ability to run these tests individually so we don't need to return the character name at this point what we need to do is have it call set let's say set strength Obviously, we should probably expand on this a little bit more. Um, for instance, to test all of these functions and make sure that they're working as expected. So, create character, character game, set strength. Now, I need to make sure that I'm calling it with the from address of the character account. Same with the creation of a character. And if I call get character, it's all basically need to be called from the same thing. Don't need any of those. I just need to simply state now a fail condition. So if I run the truffle test, it should fail. Okay, it fails. Revert request did not come from game. There we go, that's what we expected. Request did not come from the game, which is exactly what we wanted. Because we didn't want any requests coming from the game that would permit that. Now, there is some, a little bit of code that I have somewhere that is useful for catching exceptions in tests. I think it's just simply a case of um, try catch block I can't remember the syntax off the top of my head so I'm going to do a little bit of internet copying and pasting um, let me just do a quick search 
for I can't remember which example is I'm actually on the learning solidity tutorials right now just learning which one it is and I think it was from tutorial 27 or I may have used that or if not that it would have been tutorial 22 I think it's actually tutorial 22 so in my car in my tests test the crowd sale should have a fail condition somewhere let's see if I can find it so it's not to test the crowd cells it tests my token Where in the bloody hell is it? Um, I've, I, the thing is, I know I've definitely done this before. I just can't think in what sort of context I've done it in. Um, ah, tutorial 26. There we go. Right. So. To catch this failure and basically assert that the um, condition is true, we just simply state catch error. Get a little bit of fancy lambda. Now, technically, if I run this, it will actually pass because um, uh, that's kind of what we wanted. But we're going to do it one step further. We're going to assert um, not equal. In fact, we're going to assert equal. Is it set not equal? No, it's a set equal. Sorry, my mistake. I'm just going to say error dot message. This simply should match. I'm not entirely sure what the error message is. Let me just dump it out and find out. So console.log. Uh, if I just run that. I'm pretty sure the error message itself is simply just going to be this one here. Request did not come from the game. Actually, no, it's the whole thing. It's a little long. And then we're simply just going to state exception not thrown with an invalid user call. So I was just formatting the code there. Get rid of that. Let's run the truffle test again. And I want to update the text on this as well. Not happy with that. Should not allow me to create. A, should not allow me to set an a set attributes of a character. And I'll just say exception not thrown when setting roots of character. With invalid address. Okay, so that should cover us on the testing side of things. Um, let's just make sure that the migration still works as well. So truffle should hopefully just have it. Truffle migrate dash dash network ganache dash dash reset. Now, if this works, I'm pretty much going to wrap it up there for today because I've covered um, a fair amount there. The next tutorial, I'm going to start looking at the skills. I was going to start looking at the front end, but I kind of feel like let's just get the foundation in first, then we'll tackle the front end. And obviously, that's when we'll dive into Redux, React, um, Drizzle, and so forth. 
Now, I hope you found today's tutorial useful. Um, I hope it gave you some insight into the sort of the, the the process and the thinking behind sort of creating a game, and you see how easily things change, such as uh, the implementation of the Rogue Warrior Wizard, going from like a, a contract with functions in to just being an empty contract with a uh, implement. Well, basically with an extension using predefined variables. Um, that, like I said, is pretty much it for me today. If you found this uh, tutorial useful, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the link uh, in the box down below. Um, but I am James, and I will see you next time.